Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan here. We have a special guest, Dr. Brian Shoemaker. It's going to be a great show. We're going to talk about foot rot and cattle and uh, pick his brain and, and learn a little bit more about that foot health. We'll be back right after these messages. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. The state of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brian Shoemake, and we met at the Executive Veterinary mm -hmm. uh, Program, which was between Kansas State and the University of Illinois, and, and we've been colleagues and friends uh, since, and to get him on the show. and even on a day that you're on call, uh, yeah. kind of steal a little bit of your time. Maybe yeah. we'll cross our fingers, right? We already got one in the books, but <laughs> so, carve out a little time. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Dr. Shoemake is a, a professor here at the University of Missouri. And tell me just a little bit about what you do at the University of Missouri. So I wear a couple different hats. Um, I'm an assistant teaching professor and predominantly focus on our food animal ambulatory practice. Um, and always have students around, except in the time of COVID, um, teaching them the art, science, medicine of veterinary practice out in the field, and then have a small component of in uh, the classroom kind of teaching that goes on as well, and then also help support the research endeavor of a public, public university. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, I'm a little bit biased because I uh, have a, a daughter that uh, attends the University of Missouri, so uh, she's getting a great education. We're really proud to, to, to be able to be a part of it. Um, so let's talk about foot rot. You're seeing cases, you see different cases of foot rot and, and things like that, but I think a lot of times we got to just talk about what foot rot is. Yeah, so we see a lot of foot rot. Um, we've got a lot of beef cattle that come down with it surprisingly. So it is a bacterial infection of the foot, um, specifically that interdigital space or that soft tissue area between the claws that when the foot gets wet or really moist for prolonged periods of time or gets some sort of laceration or cut down in there, it predisposes them to a bacteria that's just found everywhere in the environment. It's even found in the rumen and they get that in there and then it starts to cause a lameness and progresses to a 
fairly debilitating inability to walk if it's left untreated for extended periods of time. Yeah, that same old bacteria, a fuso bacterium can cause liver things. abscesses yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. I think that's one of its other Yeah, diphtheria and liver abscesses mm -hmm. and and foot rot. So it's something that you know, we see quite a bit of in, in the feed yards when we get out west, mm -hmm. we're seeing more diphtheria and and liver abscesses, but we definitely have foot rot. So when when you're you know, going out and you're finding an animal, what, I mean, clinical signs? Clinical signs that I'm typically looking at are, is the foot even swollen? Because there's going to be a lot of swelling and it's gonna be on both sides of the foot. If it's a fracture, if it's an abscess that's in one claw, you're only have swelling in that localized region, but foot rot's gonna cause swelling both sides and it's gonna extend up into the fetlock. It'll stay fairly low in the leg, um, but can get pretty severe there. And then non-weight bearing lameness, um, doesn't really have any oozing or pus or anything like that that's gonna be manifested. It does have an atrocious odor to it um, that you'll be able to recognize it when you smell it. <laughs> well, that's got us kick-started off today on Foot Rot. We're here with Dr. Brian Shoemake. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. We're gonna take a break here, and when we come back, We'll be more with Dr. Shoemake here on Foot Rot. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Welcome to our Cattle First Tip as sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medic. When we have spring Kevin cows, we preg check in the fall. When we have fall Kevin cows, we preg check in the spring. And really I wanna to talk to you about there are basically three different methods in which you can detect pregnancy in cows. One is through manual palpation, and, and that is having a veterinarian or someone who is good at, at actually manually palpating for pregnancy, and they can age how far along those cow, cows are with their gestation. The second one is with ultrasound. There are different ultrasounds. They're hand-guided or there are shaft guided ultrasounds that you can use that can not only tell you the age of the fetus but also tell you the sex. Now the last one that is new on the block is the blood test. Taking a blood sample from the tail vein or the jugular, sending that in to a lab that has these types of diagnostic tests, you can also diagnose pregnancy today from a blood or a milk test. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. The state of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brian Shoemake. We're friends and colleagues here and uh, we're talking foot rot. And you know, that's one of those things that happens all year round. We see it, cows, bulls, calves, yeah. things to that nature, but um, you know, it, Talk to me a little bit about when you're when you're approaching foot rot cases or, or lameness case, you know, we kind of assume it's in the foot until proven otherwise. Yeah. So my approach to lameness is I really want to see them walk around a little bit before they actually get into the chute to see 
if that animal's shifting their weight any particular way that might say this is again just in one claw versus both or somewhere in between. And then once we've got them in the chute and localized to one leg, um, getting that foot up and looking at the underside of that foot. 90% um, of all lamenesses are gonna be localized down into that foot. Um, and that's true across almost every species. So we really gotta see what's going on there. And yep. most of the time it's on the underside, not the top side where we can easily see. So lifting it up and then really examining it. I, I have, you know, that's one of the things that we have issues with in, in a lot of beef production is people want to just make an assumption. They don't pick the foot up. They don't know that it could be a claw. It could be something else. So picking that, that, that foot up, don't get kicked, yeah. but, uh, um, but stabilize it so you can actually get the right diagnosis. Um, what are we going to see if it's foot rough? I turn that front foot over, bend that knee, take a look. What am I going to see? So things you'll see is swelling, again, all around the hoof, yep. um, and especially in between the claws. And if you can have so much swelling that the claws actually have to separate um, because they can't stay in contact with each other like they're supposed to. If you go to touch that area, these animals are gonna be extremely painful because that's an open exposed wound in an area that they put a lot of weight on. There's a lot of rough um, debris or materials that they might be stepping on or walking through that they've gotten hypersensitive to those openings or wounds. Um, they can have lacerations, abrasions, fissures, or cracks in the um, interdigital space as well that's gonna cause that pain to be there. And then the most definitive for me in the field is to just run a finger in between the claws and if it smells like death, it, it's foot rot <laughs> until proven otherwise. I agree. Um, it, it's, it's definitely, it's a, well, it's an anaerobic bacteria. Yeah. And so it, when you, when anybody that's ever done an anaerobic culture understands that death is a great yeah. way because there's no blood. Yeah. Right. So, so it smells like death and, and, uh, then you got your diagnosis. What happens if we don't get them treated? What's, what's like the sequela to that? I mean, like the club foot and the big, yeah, so if we don't get those treated, then the bacteria will continue to just penetrating through into the deeper structures of the hoof. We can get bone involvement, joints, tendons, things like that, that are harder to truly treat and get cured. Catch it early, two to four day response time, and they're back to basically normal. That's awesome. Great advice. Got to catch them early, just like any other disease that we have, whether it's respiratory disease or foot rot. Well, we found out what it was. We figured out how to diagnose it on your farm. When we come back with Dr. Shoemake, we're gonna talk about uh, how we can treat those animals with foot rot right here on Doc Talk. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Beef Teaching Farm is a place where producers, entrepreneurs, faculty, innovators, consumers, and most of all, our students, have an opportunity to learn. We strive for excellence in the beef business and provide an environment for others to engage in production agriculture. Through teaching, advocacy, and hands-on instruction, we can grow the next generation of beef producers.
We are. We are. We are. The Iowa State University Beef Teaching Farm. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brian Shoemake, and he is an assistant teaching professor yep. at the University of Missouri. Um, I guess I was raised in Southern Iowa, so I say Missouri, not Missouri. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, we are uh, talking about foot rot. Dr. Shoemake sees a lot of cases. He's teaching students and seeing cases. And, you know, if you're in the area of, of here, you're taking calls, right? Ambulatory mm -hmm. calls, so yep. producers and things in the area. You've got one of the experts right here that can come out on your farm and, and do a lot of good for you uh, beyond just the fire engine mm -hmm. stuff. You're doing probably some production uh, uh, consultation and different things if producers need it. Yeah, we do a lot of herd investigations, workups of how can we increase productivity or just overall herd health and things like that. So, yeah. yeah, he's one of the rising stars in our profession, so you need to get him out there and, and get him put to work. Um, when we uh, when, we're, when we left, we've diagnosed foot rot, so now we've got the calf in the chute and we've got the smelly foot and it's time to treat them. What are, we, what are, we, what are you doing these days? So the mainstay of therapy is just antibiotics that you can inject. Um, doesn't have to be directly on the foot, and actually it's recommended not to put anything on there. It's not really gonna help, so probably wasting your time and efforts there. But oxytetracycline, um, the Ceftiofir products, Excel and Exceed have labels for foot rot. Um, New Floor and Draxon also have it labeled as well. So a lot of choices that fit into maybe your antimicrobial programs so that we're not overusing one over the other, but all of them provide great results. Um, and can treat this bacterial infection. So the key is finding them early, getting them doctored. Um, you know, I, I keep stressing this, pick the foot up, because if it's a sole abscess or a toe abscess or something like that, the antibiotic isn't gonna, right. isn't gonna do it. Yeah. And so um, really, most all these antibiotics are labeled then for mm -hmm. foot rot. So pick one, work with your local veterinarian yep. um, to, to get an antibiotic. What about darts and foot rot? Because th these guys aren't going to get these feet picked up, but I'm seeing quite a bit of this, you know, the getting darts slung around the, the pastures and things like that. I, I'm assuming there's some foot rot products that would fit in the darts. Yeah, so can definitely put antimicrobials in the darts. It probably limits your options at that point. Right. Um, I'm not a fan of darts, Personally, um, I think there's some BQA issues that we run into, yep. and then the actual amount of antibiotics that we're going to get into the animal successfully. I saw a, a great study that was presented at AVC showing that the darts don't completely pay out. So the pharmacokinetics and different things like that. But I, I get back to that other one is we got to get a diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah, you can go out there and sling darts and not be treating the right thing. Yep. And so get the diagnosis, get the animal up there, pick the foot up, use one of our antibiotics, there's many of them labeled. Anything else on the therapy side? So two things, um, if the antibiotics don't work after the first round, mm -hmm. get your veterinarian more involved and say, okay, I've already treated it once and that probably means it's something else or it's more severe that they need to be involved with it. And then NSAIDs can really help an animal sure. improve more rapidly and just overall better return to function. What are some of the NSAIDs, you gotta remember that we're looking at some of these, you know, which ones were you, are you using? So topical banamine is now out yep. and officially labeled for foot rot in beef cattle, and then oral meloxicam if um, the topical is not an option. Perfect. Uh, antibiotic, get somebody involved if they don't respond, and use an NSAID or some sort of topical banamine or something of that nature to help with the pain. Yep. We're going to talk about prevention here in our last segment with Dr. Shoemake right here at the University of Missouri. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. 
If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. The State of Iowa and Iowa State University are proud to host the 2021 Beef Improvement Federation Annual Research Symposium and Convention. The convention will be located in downtown Des Moines with easy access to the airport, hotels, and local restaurants. Iowa State University is just north with its research and teaching farms. Join us in Iowa and experience how Iowa provides the beef industry with innovation to application. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brian Shoemake. And Dr. Shoemake is assistant teaching professor at the University of Missouri's College of Veterinary Medicine, where he teaches all things bovine, ambulatory. Yep. You know, if you live in this area and you want to use a good veterinarian, this is this is one I would be calling. Um, and it gets those students some teaching cases, right? Yeah. Gets them out in the field, hands on, ready to go practice. Cool, cool. Um, so let's talk about prevention in foot rock. It's something so common, but I think we take a lot of things for granted and, and we get into some cases and they're like, what could I have done? You know, so what are some things that you think about when it comes to prevention? Yeah, so prevention is pretty key, um, but also pretty easy as long as we think about it just a little bit as we get into the wet, muddy times of year uh, when the cattle are maybe congregating around certain areas. Um, that mud and moisture is going to cause that foot to soften and then the bacteria can just penetrate into the skin and start causing the infection from that route. Um, in the dairy industry, they use foot baths right. that are pretty effective. Beef cattle, it's hard to get the contact time and make sure that the solutions stay clean enough to be effective. So really, keeping them on dry ground that is comfortable. Um, anything that has a lot of prickly or rough surfaces to it that can cause lacerations or abrasions can predispose them to foot rot as well. Yep, and I've even seen, you know, like <laughs> in the summertime, we're doing something good for the animals. We're providing shade. We get this little square shade out there that doesn't move at all. And if you don't get movement from the sun underneath, the cattle don't ever move, so you just create a bog. Yep. And the urine and the defecation, and it gets a bog, and it gets soft, and they're standing in there and you got nitrogen in an anaerobic place and yep. they carry them in their guts so that comes out in the feces and next thing you know we got big foot rot outbreaks because of something we're trying to do that's good for the cattle. Yep. You concentrate animals you're going to concentrate pathogens too. So moving those shades around or getting them a tree line to get into um, definitely helps prevent that and spread them out. It's huge. It's huge yep. to, to do that. So that's a great prevention. Um, looking for areas of rough ground, I, I would smooth them out around water tanks. I, um, you even talked about maybe some some thick grasses later in the summer and different things. Yeah, so in Missouri, in the very dry parts of the year, we'll find that cattle come off pasture with these abrasions from just stepping on rough grass or branches or twigs or things that they normally don't have an issue with, but as it gets drier, it gets rougher on their feet too. Yeah, it gets drier and, and uh, as we, uh, as we sit there and, and think about that, what, um, you know, any parting thoughts or thoughts that you would have for, for producers and foot rot and just things in general? Prevention is key. It'll really cut down on your lameness and injuries. And then once you see it, or if you see it, treatment sooner rather than later really, really does cure it. Great. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. It's uh, been uh, uh, one of those things that, uh, to find the time and get out here and, and meet with you. Yeah. But for you to take the time off, it means a lot to me. It's been great. It's awesome. Hey, thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to know what we do, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com and always work with your local veterinarian. With Dr. Brian Shoemake, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and we'll see you down the road.
Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility.